During the 2020 election, the city of Green Bay apparently handed over control of its central count facility to a Facebook-funded Democrat political operative named Michael Spitzer Rubenstein. But how did Rubenstein wind up in Green Bay in the first place? Well, it turns out Wisconsin Elections Commission Administrator Megan Wolf helped him get access to local officials. It all came out during a hearing in the Assembly last week. You had mentioned that uh, uh, this email came from the city of Milwaukee uh, introducing you to Mr. Rubenstein and some others and asking you to spread the, uh, his contact information along to uh, anybody else who thought that you know, they might be able to use him. Yeah, um, so I was just wondering, according to the emails you sent it, you forwarded it on to Green Bay, Madison, Racine, and Kenosha. My thought behind sharing that resource is that if clerks had an opportunity to speak with other local election officials who had been through the process of scaling up their absentee process, that they should do that. Wolf said it wasn't her job to figure out who Rubenstein was or why he wanted to help with Wisconsin's election. There is not a vetting process in terms of, you know, what is somebody's political affiliation? How are they funded? Uh, that's not information we would necessarily have. But the clerks should certainly undertake that before they decide to engage with the resource. I know we would. Rubenstein and his organization, the National Vote at Home Institute, later contacted Wolf at least twice about scheduling a video presentation. Wolf emailed with her staff trying to make that happen, although it never did. We are dealing with contacts all the time, so I'm sure it was one of those things where we said, hey, do we want to set up a meeting, and we couldn't find time. We didn't find time. It wasn't long before there was trouble in Green Bay. Twice before the election, the Brown County clerk contacted WEC that a contractor had taken over Green Bay's election from the city clerk. Wolf said they couldn't find any evidence of that. Of course, they also couldn't find the city clerk. It was unclear at some points um, if she was available for calls, um, but we certainly attempted to, uh, to contact her on multiple occasions. Uh, but we were told that she was on leave in the days before the election and that we should contact um, her supervisor, who was Diana Eckenbach, or uh, Kim, who was the deputy. Weck then received an official complaint about Rubenstein's group meddling in the Green Bay election, but decided there wasn't anything they could do about it. And the commission doesn't have any sort of statutory authority over private grant funding, and so it was dismissed. Now, despite all these conversations and investigations, Wolf tried to claim she had never even heard of Rubenstein or his organization. Well, I wouldn't have recognized his name from Adam until uh, this came up after the election. Representative Joe Sanfilippo called her out. So you didn't um, have anything to do with him specifically up an, until Election Day? I didn't even know his name. I, I, no, I did not. Well, you must have known his name because you sent an email or you received an email sometime around August 24th saying, hey, talk to Michael to help with the elections. And then you forwarded his name. In fact, on the 28th, you sent an email to Green Bay, Madison, Racine, Kenosha and said, reach out to Michael. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's him. So, right. I mean, you heard his name before Election Day. But I didn't know that he was the consultant that was at Central At Count. Green Bay. Right. Oh. And the committee let her get away with that excuse, at least for now. For the McIver Institute, I'm Bill Osmolsky.